So the recording is running. Um, it is uh, 2200 hours on this beautiful 14th of December of the uh, the year of the Lord 2021. Sorry. Um, so I do want to uh, first of all, Nico, thanks so much for making making the time for joining uh, this uh, illustrious uh, series of interviews that we're hosting. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> it yeah. was a big surprise when you when you asked me for an interview. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, so, that, that's yeah. but that's that's exactly what I uh, what I try to do is on the one hand I I want to have as um, as many different representatives from the Eurorack space here as well because mm. I can of course um, I can I can I can talk to people from from Make Noise on the one hand, uh, but I also want to understand what people who are new to the Eurorack sphere or new to the Eurorack maker uh, environment who are doing very interesting and inspiring things like yourself. And I just want to, uh, I, I, I want to get to know you a bit better. And I know that the people um, who are frequenting this, well, this series of interviews um, are dying to know as well. So um, typically my, my, my first question is always, well, how's today been? Have you done anything special, anything that, that's worth mentioning. Uh, worth mentioning um, Kaspersky antivirus, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure it's very interesting. Well, uh, what I, happened I with Kaspersky? Uh, because of course this well, has been a <laughs> it's been an interesting I'm couple of days. It, I'm deploying it uh, at the office. Uh, that's just end of the story. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, it's it's been a very oh, interesting day in cybersecurity the last couple of days. That's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's what I saw also with the um, Log4j. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it what you're talking about? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the mm -hmm. that's the key thing. I've um I have a I, few upgrades to to do. <laughs> yeah. So I for, for me it's mm. been I've never seen something like this before. I actually had to work throughout the weekend. I was uh, I was talking oh. to a lot of um, uh, of people that I work with. A lot of our our users were um, were having some trouble or wanting to be at least well put at ease that they weren't r running any risk. But mm. it's indeed it's it's a great Crazy it's a <laughs> it's it's a perfect storm. <laughs> it's a perfect storm. <laughs> And then, of yeah. course, the, the 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 fun thing is, of course, that it all originated or it became known because of Minecraft. That's, of course, the beauty of it. Ah, oh, Minecraft was the uh, the origin of this uh, zero day uh, exposition. Mm. exposition. Well, it it it, it mm. added to the visibility, uh, to my knowledge. Mm. So it's 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 a very okay. real exploit, and the from from what I've seen is, of course, you've got Minecraft in both. Uh, uh, .NET and and Java varieties, and especially mm. the the Java one is um, is is the one that's really used by people who want to mod Minecraft. And I'm I'm, I'm okay. not a Minecraft connoisseur or anything, uh, but apparently that's where it happened. That they said, okay, well we can actually interact with this. And then of course they found out, okay, well that look for J is of course used well by the whole world. Everywhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> yes. um. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, I think it was even XKCD that that had a beautiful image. Uh, what was it? Uh, if I look at like this, I might be able to find. Yeah, there, there you go. This is exactly, this is exactly the uh, the one that I was looking for. I'm just going to put it in companion channel. So uh, before oh, yeah. people think that we are. Um, uh, talking about a cybersecurity podcast or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's dive into music. Let's dive into that. So um, sorry about that. No worries. No, this, this these are the kind of tangents that I love to do in in this show as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nico, could could you tell us a bit more about where you're coming from from a musical perspective? How was your musical upbringing? So when you were young, what kind of music were you into? Uh, what kind of influence did your did your parents have on you when you developed your own musical tastes? Mm. Um, I was grown in um, in a sixties uh, uh, and seventies music. Mm -hmm. uh, my father uh, is loves Pink Floyd and uh, the Who, mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones, and uh, all this stuff. Great. <clears throat> 
Um, he also uh, listened to Vangelis and uh, Jean-Michel Jarre in mm -hmm. France. Um, but uh, I, I listened to them too much <laughs> at, this, uh, <laughs> at this time. <laughs> so uh, I lost my sensitivity. <laughs> um, happens, and after that, yeah. uh, during my teenage years, uh, I was uh, uh, into rock, grunge, and uh, punk music, and uh, metal. And uh, in my uh, 20s, I arrived, uh, I came to listening to uh, trip up and down tempo, uh, completely uh, different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I started uh, listening to electronic music, techno, and uh, stuff like that. So I'm, I have a broad spectrum <laughs> in terms yeah. of uh, music. Absolutely. Uh, taste. But you and, do hear um, a lot of people in the Eurorack sphere talking about having a background in specifically punk and, and to a lesser degree also, also metal music as well. So, um, mm. and, and the same is true for me. So I'm still a big punk nerd and, and a metal head. But um, is that something that you have that you still can enjoy or is that something that you still uh, think about as part of your adolescent years? Um, no, I still like um, listening to, to old bands, uh, or, well, old. my first loves like Rage Against the Machine and uh, things from the 90s. Yeah. And, um, but uh, these last years, uh, I mostly listen to, to Pink Floyd and, uh, <laughs> and some uh, down tempo like uh, Kruder and Dorfmeister. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, electronic music. Um, uh, I, I, I'm a big, uh, big beat fan. Uh, so the, the Chemical Brothers, mm -hmm. Crystal yeah. Method, and things like that. And uh, recently, I, I discovered a, a YouTube channel that changed my life <laughs> in terms of, uh, of electronic music. It's uh, Her Berlin. I don't know if you you know this. So, so what's it called again? Her. Her uh, H H O R in Berlin. Or Berlin. It's uh, it it's a place. Uh, it looks oh, like yeah, a yeah 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 it's it's with a, uh, a yeah. an O with an umlaut yeah. Yeah yeah absolutely. It's uh, a place that looks like a bathroom and uh, there are DJs <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy and I, I'm discovering many many uh, artists there. It's very cool. Absolutely. Let me just uh, paste that into the uh, companion channel so uh, people know what we're talking about. So that's Her Berlin. Yeah. I'm also going to make sure that all of the yeah. links that we share are also going to be included in the uh, in the recording afterwards. Okay, nice. So um, then, if you if you, if you, if you take that into that 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 whole development into a broader appreciation of electronic music. Um, Mm -hmm. So, were you were you playing any instruments at that time, or is that something that came on later? I started playing the, the bass uh, when I was twenty four. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm forty one today, um, and uh, I've been playing in bands since uh, uh, two thousand ten. Uh, we 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 were playing uh, post rock style. Nice. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like it too. Uh, I've been playing this kind of music uh, for for years, and uh, recently, uh, during the lockdowns, uh, we started playing music at the office with my colleagues because we are a bunch of uh, musicians there. Oh, nice. With the uh, with my colleague uh, Noodle Show, with, which is uh, listening to. <laughs> To us right now, <laughs> uh, he's the man who uh, manipulates modular things. <laughs> so and, he's uh, he's the reason why you got into modular then, or absolutely yes. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Um, and uh, so there is a guitarist. I play bass, and uh, he plays the synths. And we have um, a friend who plays uh, keyboards also. Nice. Yeah, no, and uh, he has a prophet also. 
So we have him uh, having good fun. Oh, great. The Wednesday, Wednesday evenings, yeah. <laughs> So I uh, I did see that Xiao now raised his hand, so I've invited him on, on stage. Hi Xiao, how are you? Uh, hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Let yes. me just uh, get, ah, your, great. <laughs> get your volume on there as well. Oh, Welcome, nice, nice to meet nice you. Nice to hear you. Uh, yeah, I saw you, uh, your review on the Mandala, so, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to do that, of course. And this... Um, and as I said to Nico, I, I want to understand, of course, the, the, the people behind uh, the modules as well and, and get to know them and see how that uh, had it evolved. So uh, I might come up to you as well with some questions, Xiao. Ah, sure, sure, my pleasure. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, um, Nico, so could you, so you, you guys started playing at the office and uh one thing led to another uh you you had xiao there with with his uh, with his synths and probably his modular so when did it then click with you that you said hey that's something i want to do as well well i was uh i was playing with uh, microcontrollers for years and um i never had a big project with uh, these microcontrollers uh, i quickly made a, a pedal board for controlling MIDI effects in uh, Ableton Live. Nice, yeah. But uh, using a, a Teensy. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, what I wanted to do uh, is something to uh, to be um, a musician companion <laughs> uh, with a Teensy. Initially, uh, the, the mandala was not uh, at all a sequencer. It was, um, it was a, a an MN break randomizer. <laughs> okay. It it was the the original project. Uh, it, it was some, some sort of uh, beat repeat uh, on uh, MN breaks or any uh, any MIDI uh, rhythm. Mm -hmm. And and I totally uh, wanted something that like do gener generative uh, like break beats. Yeah. But uh, turns out that it, we end up with some kind of sequencer. <laughs> but well, of course, I, I, I do love the idea of having yeah. a dedicated aim and break module. I do love that. Mm. It is yeah, still yeah, a great that, idea. It was a good idea. <laughs> it, but, it might be a, a, a future module. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, or maybe maybe like an Easter egg in uh, in the LFO or something. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 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 I, I, I have room in the in the in the memory. <laughs> oh, that's what I was afraid of. So, so you were you were thinking about the 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 aim and break module, and and then essentially you 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 realized okay, well, what we were gonna do is make make a sequencer. How did that whole involvement yeah. happen? Yes, actually, uh, the the beat repeat variations um, were not necessarily uh, coherent in the rhythm. And I was looking for something more um, trustable uh, in terms of variations in the in the beat. Yeah. And I came to uh, uh, to read uh, some articles about uh, the Euclidean 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 reasons. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, okay, let's do it like this. <laughs> so uh, I, I came out to something um, totally Euclidean. And uh, multi-track because uh, I wanted to to drive uh, several instruments. Indeed, indeed. So and that was the, the birth yeah. of the mandala. <laughs> yeah, and and in regards to the to the mathematical principles behind the the mandala, um, as you said, you, you had to read up on Euclidean rhythms. But has that been something mm -hmm. that you've looked into before, like musical theory, or is that something that you've that had your interest beforehand? Um, in terms of um, of beats or um, yeah, maybe even like beats, mm, or maybe even as a bass player that like you said, well, yeah. things like rhythm, uh, which is of course quite logical for a bass player to work on. Um, but has that has that been something that you've been really interested in? Uh, yes, but it, it's very difficult topic. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so uh, I have um, always played the bass. Um, uh, with my guts, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, uh, mostly improvising. Uh, I have 
I have a, a very tiny bit of theory, but it, nowadays it's more uh, the experience that makes me play uh, something uh, something cool. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, in terms of pure theory, um, it, it, it's above me. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. That that's it's all in the. Uh... That's the that's the beauty of of, 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 of of modular. That's the beauty of of synthesizers. You don't need to be a um, a classically trained artist um, before mm. you can actually create something beautiful. Um, I can speak on my own behalf. So I, I've never been classically trained or anything. I just like to make noise, and yeah, that that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. So yeah. So then, uh, of course, well, you, you had that idea for the for the mandala, and then things, of course, quickly got out of hand because uh, it was, of course, picked up by by, by several people, uh, people with a broader reach than myself. How did that all happen? Well, um, I was trying to get some feedback uh, with with the mandala, and uh, so the first user was uh, Sho, my mm -hmm. colleague. <laughs> He was very happy to to play with this, mm -hmm. and uh, he gave he gave me uh, ideas uh, about the quick saves and uh, yeah. stuff like that. So thank you very much, Xiao. Really inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, show your your microphone is very loud and noisy. I don't know if you if you can oh, lower it again or <laughs> sure. I don't know, Jesper, if you if you can feel it too. Oh, I can okay. hear it, but uh, as I said, I can typically just take that out afterwards, so no, I'm mm. not too worried about that. Okay, cool. <laughs> so uh, yes, he was my my first uh, first user, and mm -hmm. uh, I was following uh, people on Instagram uh, who who made modular synths, uh, and uh, specifically Marianne Idonia. Yeah, of course, yeah. Who uh, I, I really like uh, her work and um, I reached out to her and um, proposed her to to try it and uh, just uh, tell me what she thinks about <laughs> absolutely so uh, so I made it uh, I made one for her with a, um, a cool uh, front panel <laughs> because yes everything is uh, is built uh, at home uh, yeah I have a CNC machine and I make everything uh, in my garage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the I one that's on her. the website, right? The the the, uh, the blue one. That's yeah, the, with, exactly, the, with the wooden yeah, yeah. with the wooden central knob. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, the the customization is very 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 cool. I think uh, for for users. So um, I made one for her, and after that, Brian, who is listening to us, uh, came to me, and uh, we discussed about uh, about the mandala. And he he told me, yeah, okay, just send one to me, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you've so, got a picture uh, of yours, like... Brian, if you've got a picture of your mandala, if you could uh, throw that into the companion channel as well, because I'm just gonna grab mine mm. as well. I'm just gonna add a picture uh, of that as well that would be great let me see where is it mm. i did have to take it out i did have to take it out of the the case for uh, for, for another video but let me just take a picture real quickly because that's of course something mm. just to see that whole evolution oh um marianne is actually now reaching out where she can watch the show so i'm just gonna make sure that she's able oh, cool. to invites as well so just uh uh here we go these are the things i, I always like um where is it oh it's on discord <laughs> so we might have marianne join as well later on oh, um, nice. so i was in the progress of actually taking a picture of the mandala that i've got oh there is a bit of shadow well that's not going to be a big problem mm. there you go so just gonna send that as well see who we have joining 
There hey, we go. Marie. Yeah, Marie is there as well. Hi, Marie. <laughs> Good of you to join. Here we go. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Marie. Hi. How are you? I'm we were just how are you? We were just talking about you. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. I was like frantically trying to figure out how to. I can get join on. this call. You're, you're breaking up a bit, uh, Marie. I'm not sure if that's. Oh. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, I'm on my phone. Um, oh, no worries then. How? It's nice to hear you, Mary. We never discussed before um, with, with our with our voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, hi. This is what I sound like. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually just discussing the uh, the mandala, and uh, Nico was just telling us how he um, how he made the first one for uh, Noodles Yao, who's also in the audience, and uh, how he then reached out to you. Uh, to see if you were able to well give him some thoughts on it and, and that's exactly when you, you then dropped me a line on, the, on Instagram saying well how can I join <laughs> well there you go here we are uh, so how was that for you that first interaction with the with the mandala sorry to put you on the spot there <laughs> well that's okay um I thought that the mandala I thought that it was oh are you you're asking me right yeah, yeah absolutely. No, no, I'm, 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 I want to hear it firsthand from you first. <laughs> I like, I mean, I like the mandala because it's not just a dedicated Eurorack module. And I know that I was talking to Nico about making a dedicated mandala for like just for Eurorack with like CV. But I really like that uh, it's more MIDI focused than CV focused. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to. Mm -hmm get the full functionality out of the Euro rack. You have to run it through something like the Hermod. Yeah. Um, but it's cool to use with something like a drum machine. Um, Absolutely. Instead of using a sequencer like on the drum machine. It's much more responsive than, than, than any other drum sequencer I've, um, I've used. Uh, absolutely. And it's really pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I and love that's the also, light. That's yeah. also a great point, yeah. So how how is how is that Nico to to get that feedback from 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 Marie and then also seeing what people can actually do with what you've what what you've created that that labor of love that we talked about? It brings me joy. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> to know that that people are are enjoying playing with uh, with things I I make, and um, yeah, it, it's not finished. The the LFO is coming. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So uh, so how how did you uh, yeah. come up with that with that whole idea the the whole LFO uh, approach? Because on the one hand, it's of course it's a well, it's an evolution, of course, of what what you've already done with the with the mandala, I would assume. Yes, yes. Actually, I was um, I was testing the the CV inputs of the mandala uh, and. Uh, I needed uh, something to drive the, the, these CV inputs uh, at a low frequency, and uh, I built a quick and dirty LFO uh, with uh, an Arduino board. But mm -hmm. um, I was wondering what would be a, a really, uh, a really nice LFO. So um, I came back to Mary and asked, asked, asked her uh, what would be uh, the ultimate LFO for her in her mind. And um, she said, yeah, I just want to draw my, my waveform. <laughs> so uh, I said, okay, <laughs> let's do it. And uh, it's a, it was a very funny uh, project to develop. It's not really over. I'm still struggling with the, the CV inputs as usual, but um, mm -hmm. I, I'm getting, getting it uh, done. <laughs> so it's it's actually still on the development, or is that first one already shipped? Or uh, yes, the first uh, number one was sent to Mary a few weeks ago, two or oh, three great. weeks now, and uh, I have uh, another one to to send uh, for testing uh, to um, to um, what's his name? Uh, I don't remember his um, Instagram name. Uh, he, he lives in Florida, uh, the Mod Modular College in Florida. Okay, well, I haven't and, uh, I haven't uh, met him yet, or or them, or okay. He's I'm gonna look look them up, of course. His name. <laughs> so, did you already receive yours, uh, Mary? 
I did. I did. By the way, do you prefer yeah. Mar uh, Mary or Marianne? Uh, Murray is fine. Okay, great. Superb. Um, yes, I did. I got mine. It's in my case. I actually, um, I didn't have space, so I actually took Tides out, and <laughs> I replaced it, um, with Marie's LFO, so I'm, oh. I don't know. I mean, I replaced it, and, um, I don't know, probably gonna sell Tides now, because it's like I don't need it anymore. <laughs> what was your initial um uh idea what was your initial response to uh uh to to your LFO I might say Well I was I mean I was really excited because it, it's like I wanted to draw a shape and now I could draw a shape I mean it's fascinating that he was able to write a program to make that a reality um and to be able mm. to i mean i'm i'm assuming that it wasn't super expensive because like i'm thinking you know there's so many different ways that you could approach like drawing a shape um on a screen it could be like a touch screen or but that would be ridiculous mm -hmm. um so yeah. like the way yeah. that nico came up with drawing the shape was really really uh novel i think Using the Beezer, okay. Beezer curbs. Am I saying that right? Uh, busy. <laughs> yeah. <Chinese>. Okay. <laughs> I'm so American. I'm sorry. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> no worries. You're probably going to have a better way of pronouncing French things than I have. So uh, no worries there, Marie. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. Um. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was like such a cool, I like cool way to do it because I. I didn't even know how he would begin to approach something like that. Yeah. Mm. So, 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 Nico, could you, could you elaborate a bit more about how that interaction happens? How do you actually draw your uh, uh, your waveforms on the uh, on the LFO? Well, in, initially, you have um, when you when you start up the, the module, you have a basic uh, sine wave, um, and it's uh, it's made of uh, several points. And each of the points um, has control points, like in uh, vector drawing software, like Illustrator or Inkscape. You know these uh, handles that you can pull away to to change the, the shape of your curve. Mm -hmm. So you can um, you you have uh, one button to to select the point you want to move. And once you selected the point, you have uh, two knobs to to move it in X and Y, and uh, you can also rotate a point directly. It's, I think it's uh, pretty easy to use. <laughs> okay, um, great. Yeah. So the, was, the one uh, one module that comes to mind approach. for me is then the, and I I know this is this is not the most popular module out there. Uh, but that was the the graphic VCO by um, by Erica since. Um, oh yes, you you told me about. Yeah, that that, that that also yeah. has that capability where you can design your. Is it is it similar to that in in regard in relationship to the workflow or? Mm, it, to me, it looks less complicated, but I never had the graphic VC, uh, VCO in hands, so difficult mm -hmm. to say. Uh, it has uh, less features, I think, uh, yeah. but it, it's... Uh, and it's, of course, it's a, a dedicated LFO, LFO of course, where the, the VCO uh, was it, a, indeed, of course, a, a full-fledged VCO. It, it, can, yeah. it can output um, audio rates, uh, frequencies. Oh, nice. But um, it's mostly an LFO, yeah. And uh, for now, um, there is a MIDI input that uh, allows you to to plug something in and uh, play uh, play your your waveform in uh, at audio rates, but um, and there is also um, an F an FM uh, supposedly uh, one volt per <laughs> octave uh, input, but uh, it doesn't work really well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it works, but. Um, it's not uh, tuned. <laughs> it's not so. tuned yet. Oh, perfect. 
yeah. And is it again? <laughs> is it again based on the Teensy, or have you used any other microcontrollers here? Uh, no, it's based on uh, the ESP32 microcontroller. Okay, great. Um, that has two cores. Well, it's a bit technical, but uh, drawing something on a screen is um, is uh, slow, uh, and um, it, it cannot be uh, combined with the signal generation. So the ESP32 has two cores. In the in the CPU, and one core is dedicated to redrawing and um, interacting with the, the knobs. Mm -hmm. The other core is dedicated to pure uh, signal generation. So um, okay. it drives um, a DAC, and uh, the DAC outputs the, the the analog signals. Yeah, of course, and that, that 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 of course makes a lot of sense if you then need to have a bit more, well, calculation power there there, there as well. So we did get a question mm -hmm. from Benji. Um, yes. Do you have any options for a Volt Proactive or future firmware for audio rates uh, there as well? Uh, I'm still, uh, as, as I said, I was I'm still struggling with um, CV inputs. Um, mm -hmm. I have a voltage offset very strange thing but uh, i'm <laughs> working on it and um uh yes i think one day i'm going to make it work with the one volt per octave <laughs> okay great <laughs> but but um as i remember last time i tested it it was there was a bit of uh, latency uh between the, the the signal input and the sound output but um yeah but as it is just uh, a program running on a, on a CPU, I think I can uh, optimize it. We can always hack it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Um, one question from Brian. Um, can the LFO be treated as a one-shot, uh, as in used as an envelope? Um, this is a question Noodle Show asked me. Okay. Um, and uh, actually, it can be, uh, as of now, uh, synchronized with uh, a MIDI clock or trigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could completely uh, use the trigger input to, to uh, run an envelope. Yes. Uh, it, it's just programming. So I could... Set uh, define a mode uh, in yeah. the in the module where where you can say yes the the trigger input uh, starts a, an envelope of uh, specific lengths. I think it, that's going to be great. Yeah, hmm? I think that's enough. Well, um, the the one module that comes to mind then is of course the um, what's it called again from 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 Chaos, the uh, the Zadar. Um, which is a I've never I've never worked with it myself, but uh, to my knowledge, that also allows you to indeed design specific uh, waveforms, but is then handled yes. as a dedicated envelope generator. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we have a follow-up question from Benji: Can we have an update in yes. the future to have gates in to freeze the LFO shape and then gates in to resume cycle? Oh wow. <laughs> Oh, that's a that's an interesting question, Benji. Um, can you can you explain what you what you mean? Yeah, maybe maybe Benji, could you could you join us on stage so you can uh, uh, explain a bit more? Is that is that is, are you are you uh, able you to do that? Yeah. Freeze the the voltage at a certain position in the on the curve. Yeah. Well, he that... I've just invited Benji on stage, so I'm hoping he's yes. able to accept okay. the invite, and then we uh, we can hear it from him or them or. Hi Benji, welcome on stage. Hi. You might need to unmute yourself. I do have to tell you that. You're the best. Thank you, Jesper. I, okay, I probably welcome really Benji. Feedback. Pardon, Hello. thank you. Pardon the feedback. Nico, the ModCan Quad LFO, uh, it's like a, a Canadian company, has a gate input to the LFO to freeze the LFO cycle and then resume the LFO cycle when the gate uh, delatches, 
it's basically an input state for the LFO cycle. So it's, it's just a really fantastic option on the ModCan Quad LFO that I, I think you should look at. It's kind of the selling point for me personally, besides all the other options it has. But, but that's it. That's all. I'll let you guys keep talking. No, Thanks. no, but, but could you... Uh, so w which one was that? The Mods? What was it called? Mod, mod, mod uh, can. Stop, yeah, stop MOD. the cursor on, at a certain position, right? Stop the, the LFO uh, moving, finally. Or... Exactly. Yep. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I love it. Oh, the mod can. Oh, apologies. Yeah, no, it, I think... it could be done also. <laughs> the thing is that right. the, How the screen is... Stage? Oh, boy. The screen is small, and I'm going to... Uh, I, I have to add the uh, deeper menus, and that's not what we want. <laughs> mm. But, uh, yes, I could also uh, use the, the trigger input to in another mode. To uh, to freeze the the cycle uh, with a gate and uh, release yeah. the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. W w but would I, I be correct in assuming that you just say, well, if I get a uh, uh, a one value, then the LFO is running. If I get a zero value, the LFO actually stops and then continues again when it gets a mm -hmm. one. I think it's that. Yes, that's what I, what I understood. That's nice. That's really nice. Now, are we already diving into all these technical details? I love that. I love that. So, um, for you, Nico. So, uh, from from a, from a musical perspective, um, as you're yeah. well, on the one hand, still a bass player, but you you got drawn into this whole Eurorack world, and um, within a short amount of time, you already became a rock star within this world, and you've. <laughs> you've, you've touched so many people um is this something where you say okay well i'm gonna dive deeper into your rack or are you saying well i'm, I'm just gonna stay that uh that that your rack maker uh making sure that i understand what other people want or do you have any 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 specific well uh wishes for yourself that you can start using going forward well uh to to tell you everything uh i never had any module modular synth at home mm -hmm. but uh, i built me i built a case and uh, put a mandala and an lfo inside nice yeah <laughs> so uh, now the goal is to um, to make um, a vco uh, to start making some noise uh, Great. <laughs> i found the plans for for a, a vco one uh, and um, yes, the, the goal is to fill this case with uh, modules uh, I'm going to make. <laughs> so I have uh, two times uh, 50 centimeters. Uh, I have one linear meter <laughs> of uh, module two <laughs> to, to build. <laughs> and that's a great. Oh, I, I love that already, approach. Yeah. Wide, so uh, it uh, it feels. Uh, a lot of room already. <laughs> I understand, but um, I only started Eurorack in January of this year, and oh really? Can... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So... Oh, you're a... <laughs> okay. No, no, no. What what actually happened was is I um um this is all this is all happening uh, during COVID, right? So. Um, mm. For my day job, I, I did a lot of uh, YouTube recording. I did a lot of demos, so I invested a lot in good microphones. And mm -hmm. what I ended up doing is I was a bit bored during lockdown, even though I've got two young kids and I've got a loving wife. But mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes I was just being a bit bored because I didn't have any hobbies that I can do during lockdown. And I was just um, I was looking for the, for another microphone, and I ran into the Korg NTS-1, which is essentially a, a mini uh, synthesizer you can build yourself. And I bought that. Okay. And that's what, And after that, it just went down the rabbit hole. Uh, so I, I bought the <laughs> NTS-1. Uh, I fell in love with that. I immediately bought... What was the next one I bought? I'm not even sure what the next one was. I, um, I think Were it was... Were you playing an instrument before? No, I've never. I, I've been. In... I've been in black metal oh. bands essentially. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've always played in in punk bands, black metal bands, 
Um, uh, With what instru instrument? Guitar? Uh, bass? No, I, I'm almost afraid to say it, but I, I typically was the vocalist. <laughs> oh really? <Black> metal. <laughs> oh yeah, I can still do it. But my kids are asleep. Otherwise, I would have given you a sample. But yeah, no. And, and give us some with, role. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, and after that, of course, I, I, I just kept on adding additional synths. I really fell in love with synthesizers, and I told myself, I'll never get into Eurorack because mm. that's going to be such a a money sink and a time sink. And you know what happened? Looks like uh, a drug. It, it is well I've, I've i've been talking to paul tuss from arrow instruments uh, he's a great guy and he, he builds the most amazing modules and he uh. consequently keeps keeps uh, uh saying euro crack and i think that that's that's spot on <laughs> so what when that happened was it was so I, I i truly fell in love with more and more modules uh, sorry uh, more and more synthesizers i got into some semi modular stuff and then of course i had to say to myself okay well now i i, I truly want to get into your even though I, I i told myself i'll never do that and <laughs> <laughs> then i made another promise to myself okay i'm going to i'm going to go into your rack but I'm going to document it. I'm going to I'm going to make videos of everything that I touch. I'm going to I'm going to make sure that it's not just for me. I'm just going to do it for other people as well. And ta-da. Uh, educational, uh, yeah. 11 months later, I've got a I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a uh, a Discord um, community and I'm talking to to people who are the true rock stars of Eurorack like yourself and others. And um, yeah. It's That's great. Cool. So well, um the difference is that I, I feel more like a drug dealer. I, I don't touch it, but I, <laughs> I deal it. <laughs> I distribute, but um, yeah, I, I feel more uh, easy with the, with my bass. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. it's easier to me to to make music with um, with my uh, beloved instrument. Um, I tried uh, making music with uh, Ableton Live. I mean, purely electronic. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it always uh, ends up the same. So unfinished project, and uh, I and, think we're uh, all guilty of that. It, it intensity uh, rising, um, kind of the post rock uh, we were talking uh, about mm -hmm. earlier. This kind of. Um, increasing intensity uh, yeah. all the time and you never know when when you want to drop it <laughs> so yeah i feel better playing uh, music with my with my fingers i can imagine absolutely and oh, no. <laughs> in, in 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 all honesty i i'm still very much convinced that just the whole process of making music whether what kind of way you do that is meditative it's transformative and it's very much also um it's healing if you ask me so i think i think you're spot on and um instead of calling yourself a drug dealer you might say uh you're a pharmacist that's uh, <laughs> probably a bit oh, yes. nicer to say um no but that's a, that's it's a great pleasing. analogy it's very pleasing to 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 see uh People playing music with your accents. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's yes, uh, like you say, it's, uh, it's meditative. Mary is still here. When we when I see her playing music on her synth, she's dancing. <laughs> That's uh, very very pleasing to mm -hmm. see you all uh, enjoying. Absolutely, making yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, and as, and as you said, I think Mary, you're a great example of that. The, 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 the pure. Um, I might even want to describe it as ecstasy. You, uh, you show when you're playing music is, of course, that that that's something that we all um, appreciate. And I, even I think that most people that are into music would like to be in that state of mind when they make music. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's. Mm. Is that something for you, Mary, to uh, to respond to? But um, that's truly appreciated. Uh, yeah, thank you. I mean, 
I think a lot of musicians, they play their instruments and then like three hours have passed and it feels like no time at all. So mm -hmm. that's true. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's uh, that's great. And um, maybe then one, one. Well, I've got two two final questions for you, Nico. Um, yeah. So talking about playing playing bass and having all these 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 great Eurorack projects that you're working on um do you foresee any sort of fusion modules going forward where you're going to bring your bass into the mod the modular uh, sphere uh maybe doing some instrument interfaces or, or 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 dedicated effects uh modules or is that something that you want to keep completely separate um I would have to think about it, but um, I never, uh, never did before. <laughs> uh, actually, I have a, a boss uh, multi effect for bass, and I already have uh, many, many sounds on it that I don't even use. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe uh, someday I have a crazy inspiration and uh, and uh, develop something. Like this to interface uh, instruments. I mean, uh, manual instruments <laughs> with uh, with synthesizers. But, mm -hmm. um, no idea for the moment. Not yet. Not yet. That's something great. That, that triggers gates when you play a note. Or <laughs> mm -hmm. No, don't know. Well, we're really are interested to see where. Um, uh, where, where you're going to take your uh, your brand, and of course, where you're going to be taking uh, Eurorack as well, uh, uh, being our uh, go-to pharmacist. Um, <laughs> then, if you were to go back to that moment when you first laid eye laid, laid eyes on uh, Xiao's uh, Eurorack case, what would be the one piece mm. of advice you would give your uh, your, your future your your uh, your past self then? At the moment, I, I saw his uh, setup. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Because that that's of course probably going to be the the first um, notion you've had of Eurorack or, or modular synthesis, probably. Mm. Uh, I would say it looks complicated. It is, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, individual modules have a specific function. So basically, it's not that complicated well <laughs> it's the feeling i have <laughs> no i think that's a nice that's a nice sentiment it's it, the way you say okay well it might look intimidating but it's it really isn't it, it's, it's still, all dedicated functionality it's still very intimidating when i see all this stuff plugged in together <laughs> <laughs> blinking <laughs> oh yeah absolutely but uh, yeah. And, and that is true. I took, uh, well, I took uh, an online course for analog electronics because, well, initially I, I'm, a, I'm a software developer. Uh, I used to work uh, in pure software for computers. And um, that's why uh, the Mandala was uh, essentially a MIDI tool because mm -hmm. it's, everything is digital. Yeah. Um, the interfaces are pretty simple. Uh, but uh, I would like to to dive deeper into uh, purely analog stuff uh, to to see uh, what I can do with that. And uh, well, it gives less possibilities than microcontrollers for typically for the drawing a wave on a screen. I don't see how I could do, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Purely analog is uh, is uh, another universe to me to explore. I can imagine, but that's uh, that that's the beauty of the the, the 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 synthesizer journey, of course, where you might mm -hmm. want to expand your um, your horizons yeah. the longer you stay within it. Yes, and you always have something to learn and to teach. Also, that's what I like. Uh, uh, well said well said absolutely so um uh, nico as i said I've, I've been i've been i've been asking you all kinds of questions and we've had uh, people already interacting and making sure that you are 
um, being asked everything that we uh, <laughs> we didn't prepare for. Um, so I want uh, to uh, return the favor to you and ask if, if you've got any questions for me. Um, I had one. Oh, geez. Oh, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I. No, I think it was about IT and everything. <laughs> so, oh yeah, but that's fine. That's fine. We can run on tangents. No worries. <laughs> so, what's your daily job? Or can you talk about it? Or? Yeah, sure, sure. No, I'm. Um, okay. I'm a. Um, I work in pre-sales, so I'm a. I'm a consultant sales engineer for a uh, an enterprise software vendor. Uh, you can you can easily find me on LinkedIn and, and know all about what I do there. Uh, so what I okay. essentially do is I um, I work with a lot of our customers and I uh, analyze their um, their pain points. Amazing. I analyze their challenges and I then apply technology to well to to, to ease their pain, so to say. So it's all about okay. making sure that business processes can be digitally transformed. Um, um, on a day by day basis. So there's a lot of AI automation, machine learning, those kind of things happening. And okay. I've got I've got a, a programming background, but now I'm more talking about things. Um, and okay. essentially, I, I essentially do the exact same thing that I do on my channel is I, I mm. break down things that are very complicated, and I try to explain them yeah. as easily as possible. <laughs> <laughs> So next to okay. my next to the, um, um, the the synthesizer channel, I also have an intelligent automation channel, uh, which is all about the things that I do there. Let me just, even though this is all oh. quite technical, but um, um, we're all amongst friends, so I'm just going to share that in the <laughs> in the companion channel. Um, so there you go. Yeah, it can be interesting. Yeah, I'll indeed. Tell you everything. I I, I work. Uh, in the in IT too, uh, yeah, in a, in a small company in Switzerland, and uh, my colleagues are uh, are making um, in vitro uh, human uh, tissues, respiratory tissues, so oh, wow. um, for for research. Oh, that's great! <laughs> but so this is a very interesting environment to evolve in. And um, yeah, I don't say that because the show is here, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, it's a real pleasure to, to work with, uh, with these people. Uh, that's and, real uh, cutting edge uh, technology you're working on then, because that's of course, that's, that's the future where you say, okay, well, we have real t human tissue that you can then grow or um, yeah. Uh, you use them to, yeah. to test uh, pharmaceutical products or um, prototypes. Or... Yeah. And we're back to you being the pharmacist. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, of course, great. That That's, of course, going to be the future of uh, of the whole pharmaceutical industry really where good. where that's going to be. So we, we once that's fully evolved and you guys are indeed then on the cutting edge there, uh, that's going to negate all of the needs for animal testing and human testing as well. Absolutely, yes. This is a good alternative to, to avoid uh, animal testing. Absolutely. No, that's great. Um, well, that being said, I, I do want to, even though we already had a lot of interaction with the audience uh, already, I do want to open it up for people to, uh, to ask you any questions that they might like. As long as it's all PG yeah, sure. thirteen, then it's fine. Um, but um, yeah, let's see. Maybe maybe even Mary has some questions or some comments or some some feedback. And I'm just going to keep an eye on the companion channel. Um, questions. So, when you make the VCO, what? I guess what kind of sound are you going for? I know a lot of companies kind of like try to emulate sounds. But I'm interested to see, like, well, what kind of sound or how would you build that? Um, I have no idea yet. <laughs> Actually, I, I think uh, I make one for me uh, first to uh, to start uh, diving my own hole <laughs> into Eurorack and. Um, 
it would be I think a, a something common uh, like a sine square triangle mm -hmm. and uh, maybe after that I can uh, make the, the the LFO evolve to something uh, more performant in, uh, in terms of uh, audio rates uh, I think that it is not uh, right now so yes it's it's just um, first it, it, it's a, a small personal project this uh, VCO I have uh, simple needs in terms of, uh, of modules <laughs> No, what it's I find what a, I find interesting is, of tool. course, as as you don't have any um, uh, any modules yourself, you are a completely blank slate. So, and I think that that's something that mm -hmm. that truly intrigues. Uh, well, it intrigues me because I'm I'm really interested to see what someone who is completely blank how, how you would then approach a vco so um, i think that that's also the uh that's the question behind the question that maria just asked is how how would you approach oh, that oh an oscillator driven by an input voltage yeah <laughs> um just a simple tool uh, yeah i think it is it, just what i need well i what i I agree. It's a strange situation uh, for me to to build uh, modules that I don't even use. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I've done this uh, all my life <laughs> uh, in in software. Uh, I was a, a tool maker. Yeah. Um, I, I like um, building tools for people. Uh, to 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 enjoy or work with, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very I successfully, no... I might say, because of course, well, the the, the <laughs> thank you, yeah, of course, uh, this has of course been great, and it, um, I like yeah. listening to to people's needs and um, and try to, to find a, a nice solution that fits these needs. <laughs> you need to be in pre-sales. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to forget this world. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, we did get another question from, from Brian. Um, he said, for future projects, have you looked into or thought about using the Electrosmith DAISY controller? It's similar to Arduino Teensy. However, yes. dedicated to audio applications, lots of module makers are turning to the DAISY because of this, noise engineering being one example. Yes, I, I saw this uh, this uh, well, my it's a, a full module, the generic module. Uh, in terms of hardware, there is a microcontroller, a few knobs and pots. Yeah, and you you make it do anything you want. Uh, it looks very cool, and uh, I thought about uh, about getting one or two to uh, see uh, how to interact and learn how to interact uh, between the microcontroller digital mm -hmm. microcontroller and analog parts it can be very interesting technically to me absolutely so yeah. yes it's it's in the it's, it's in, in the, the back of your mind you might say <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so let's see if, if we have any any uh final questions from anyone in the audience in, in either that they want to come on stage or if they want to uh, post anything in the companion channel so let's see oh one final comment yeah marie thank you so much absolutely uh, marie just thanks you as well um let's see thank you uh, let's see there you go oh now i'm i've lost everything where are we yeah next modules coming absolutely well that's that's noodles yao so yeah <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to meet yes, you right. at the uh, at the uh, at the water cooler tomorrow i think <laughs> yes uh, the next module uh, that's coming is uh, comes from his uh, 
is um, sick mind. <laughs> I would say sick mind. <laughs> it's uh, uh, from uh, show uh, mind. Yes, he's uh, he has a he had an idea of um, something that sequences, and I feel bad explaining it, but because I still didn't understand it, everything he wanted to to. So 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 who explain. was that again? You said um, noodle noodle show. Oh, it was his his idea then. Yes, it was his idea. Oh, okay, great. That's well, then, I, then we just need to have uh, then we have Nul Xiao uh, explain exactly what he wants. We just need yes, to ha hear in, it from him. Come in and explain, please. <laughs> come in with your noise. Yeah, absolutely. We're just going to bring you back on stage, Nul Xiao. You might need to unmute yourself, by the way. Unmute. The suspense is. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not very um, familiar with uh, with this uh, software. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry to bring this in because uh, Nico is a bit like my uh, magic fairy. Uh, he <laughs> bring ideas into life, so I'm constantly pushing him to 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 do new models. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the the next one I'm I'm trying to explain to him is some kind of a, a break, uh, like a, a a beat dropper, because uh, I, I'm I'm a bit in the same case than you, Jasper. Mm -hmm. That I started. I'm not a musician at all. Uh, I discovered like modular, uh, like one year ago, and uh, like dive yeah. into it. So yeah, <laughs> just discover a lot of things. That's cool. And um, so uh, one thing I, I'm a bit um, stressed about is how to to do some changes of rhythm and music, especially when it comes to, to beats. And I, what I want to do with Nico is uh, to have a, a module that takes uh, the incoming of each channel, for example, and uh, from the mandala and uh, with a dedicated stage uh, having an output that is triggered uh, at one point and uh, that modify the beat according to different parameter at each stage and um, bit, bit difficult to explain it like this but um, yeah, yeah but would I, would I be right in, yeah would I be right in describing that um, as what you have in in metalcore, where you have this, uh, this, 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 um, this breakdown, where you actually just half the the BPM, and you just truly go into yeah, the I... into the beat. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. more or less. And and the thing is that having all the different parameters going in the same way, but uh, with a different pattern. Um, and also having, uh, let's say, a dedicated uh, CV output that follows uh, the different stage of the drop, if I can, if I can say mm -hmm, like this, mm -hmm. and having the CV controlling, for example, a filter uh, that can uh, affect, for example, a hi-hat or a kick that is coming in or out, um, something like this. Is, so it's not all clear in my own mind, so I understand yeah. that Nico is not <laughs> it, 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 it almost sounds like a, a <laughs> mandala 2.0 i would say because essentially in the in the mandala you already have this 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 beat design approach but you just want to have additional to make perform, performative control in, in in the beats yeah uh, yeah um yeah bpm modifications uh, controlled or randomized <laughs> oh, well, it, I'm looking forward uh, to what's it, coming out of your uh, your uh, your garage the next couple of months. Yeah. Nico. <laughs> if, it, if it happens, it will be even wider than the one that I. I'm afraid <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, but don't worry. <laughs> I think it, it, it's going to be a, a box module dedicated to this. <laughs> <laughs> no this is great this is great um mm. well i think then that that being said uh let's see i think that we've um 
well we've come already to the uh, top of the hour we've already gone five minutes over uh, that's no problem for me don't you worry um, but I do want to make sure that everyone is um, is staying safe staying healthy um, so again mm. uh, Nico any any closing comments from you anything you want to share with uh, people in the audience or people that are listening to this afterwards um, first thank you very much for trusting my hardware <laughs> I absolutely. send it to you and you just plug it in without fearing anything <laughs> absolutely <no. laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, it could break your power supply or who's no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah that's very cool and um, uh, I'm very very happy to to provide uh, cool tools to cool people um, who who appreciate them so yeah that's that's what i want that's great <laughs> bring, bring and this is not this, this has not been the last time we uh we bring you to this show don't you worry nico i really truly appreciate <laughs> it and i enjoyed uh talking to you and to uh, to noodles yao and uh our very special surprise guest, uh, Marianne Hedonia. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for coming, that, Mary. <laughs> yeah, of course. And um, uh, as I said, again, everyone uh, who's listening to this afterwards, uh, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse uh, present on, on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Modular Clubhouse. Also present on Discord. I'll make sure to have any uh, links shared below as mentioned any of the uh, the links that we shared on the companion channel will be of course um, shared also in the description um, at least as long as uh, <laughs> they are PG 13 um, if always as always I want to uh, thank everyone for um, for joining uh, Nico specifically again thanks so much for your time here today uh, everyone else Thank in the you. live Thank audience you. and anyone else who's listening to this uh, later on. Um, if you've got any questions, any comments, uh, suggestions, feedback, uh, please uh, drop me a line at jesper at themodularclubhouse.nl or just drop a line in the comments below. Uh, for now, I would say everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy and rock on. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.